Howdy YouTube, gonna do a quick video hopefully for you on repairing your header panel on your Jeep Cherokee uh, 97 through 2001. You might find use for this on the older ones, but most of those are more modular. You can replace parts of it much easier, especially if on the old ones, I wanna say the, the turn signal is a lot of this corner. So if you damage it, you might as well find a whole thing and just replace that section or the whole nose. I think some of the early noses were like two piece or they were one piece and then later on they were two piece or multiple pieces. I'm not sure because I don't have an early generation Cherokee. But on my 99, unfortunately the other day, I actually rear-ended my friend, luckily it was my friend, at the soccer fields here in town uh, going at a slow rate of speed. I slid into him probably at about three mile an hour. Uh, I just wasn't expecting him to stop and misjudged it. And luckily this is all that happened. On his bumper, which I can show you a picture here, I just dented it and he said, it's all good, dude, luckily. But I hit his bumper with the, my metal bumper and it pushed up, cause he has a 99 Cherokee just like me. And it pushed up the metal bumper and lifted it where it pushed into my nose right here and dented this golf ball size like indention on my fiberglass. Now, granted, there's enough fiberglass here to mound some Bondo glass. This stuff is, it has some short strand reinforced fiberglass in it that hopefully the fiberglass in this will bond with the fiberglass on this. Now, I know this stuff is supposed to be more so for your foundation and then you have to put like Bondo um, filler on top of it to get a nice smooth finish we're gonna see what it does without that first and if i need to i'm gonna go get some of what they call glaze and spot fill putty it's a one material bondo rather than having an activator and a solution it's or a hardener and a resin in other words for bondo um and if i have to i'll put that on top of this to make it look a lot more smoother with the body on the directions it says go an inch past where you're gonna be um sanding or filling to kind of blend it in on mine i'm going to go a little bit less i'm going to do like a quarter inch pass just to get a nice smooth finish here because i don't really think this needs a lot and then what i'm going to do to paint this is i found a rust-oleum that's only one shade different roughly than this color on the nose and honestly my whole nose needs a repaint so I might just take all the header panels out and repaint them with this same color of red. That way it kind of just ties all together. And then if I ever need to touch it up, I can just use the spray paint to touch it up. So uh, I'm going to do a time lapse and I'll voice over it for you guys to see how I do this. Because it's kind of stressful uh, mixing the Bondo and only having four minutes to use it. So my intent is to mix the Bondo and then take a credit card, a used credit card, and use it to push this in and get a nice flat surface. And then I'm gonna come back and sand it nicely down where it kind of uh, conforms uh, to the original shape of this. And we'll see how it turns out. Let's get to it.
So it's the next day. I think our first layer of Bondo glass gave us what we needed to fix this, which is a um, solid foundation to fill the pinholes and the rough spots with this Bondo glazing putty. So now I'm gonna sand this down a little bit more flat and then expose what pinholes really need to be filled and I'm gonna probably feather in on this end right here for sure and maybe on the top and maybe a little bit on the bottom with the glazing putty just to make it look as smooth as possible. But really the contour is mostly there now. It's just a matter of polishing it up and making it look even better. So let's do that. Now I'm wiping it down, getting all the excess dust out. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our, we're gonna put our layer of the Bondo glaze on to fill the holes in the center. And then we're gonna try to see if one layer does it. If one doesn't, um, maybe two will. We'll just go from there. We'll put glaze on and then we'll really start polishing this bad boy out with uh, the fine sandpaper or the 180 that I was just using. We'll get it down with 180 and then we'll polish it with the 320. So, so far, you know, if you had just this, it would make it almost, mostly unnoticeable that you had a hole pushed in as long as you painted over this, but I'm aiming to make it look almost as clean as possible. So we're gonna slap that glaze on and go from there. Let's get to it. So I uncapped it, poked the hole in it with the cap. We're just gonna apply a little bit in the spots that need it and then use this putty knife to just kind of push it in and see what happens. A little bit more up here on the top. Let's just push that in. I noticed uh, I put my light back in and I noticed right here on the curve on the inside curve it just needs a little bit right there so i'm just going to put some i'm going to mound it up and i'm just going to sand it to form here let's just take let's layer a little bit on the putty knife and let's just put it there like that and see if we can sand that to shape shouldn't be too hard to fill though here let's just load some up on the putty knife Put it in right here in the center section that needs some love. Might take a couple layers of this just because of how I'm slowly gonna be stacking some on it. But really this stuff looks like it's gonna be just what this thing needs right here. You know what? Let's let that batch dry. It says on the box that it's supposed to, it says application will normally dry in 20 to 25 minutes at 70 Fahrenheit. Right now it's a little bit below 70 here, probably 65. So I'm gonna set an alarm for 30 minutes and then we'll come and see how it turned out. And then we'll take some sandpaper to it and smooth it out and see how well we can form that to the Jeep's nose here. And, we might be on the home stretch of getting this thing fixed. I'm gonna set a 30 minute alarm and then we'll come back. While we're waiting for this to dry, so what I did with the light bezel to kind of make it fade into the original paint color is I cleaned it up and then I just hit, I spray painted from this side just to give it a little bit of the new, slightly darker red from this angle. That way it kind of fades into the original red. Like I said, the nose of my Jeep needs a good spray paint job just to clean up all the stuff that's peeling. But for now, we're just trying to tackle this job today. And then I'm hoping to fade in this once we sand her down. I'm gonna probably have to add extra uh, material right here on this spot. It actually looks like it minorly cracked right there. So it's gonna need more anyways. But I think on the next layer, we'll get this little spot fine. It's already kind of hardened up mostly and the edges are definitely hard but we still got about 
five minutes on our timer before we can really sand this. Let's just get, uh, see how the edges sand inward towards the middle. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and go straight for fine grit on the edges. That way we can blend it in maybe and not have to ever come back. Not bad. It feels like it's sanding in pretty decent. Yeah, I'm gonna give the rest of it a little bit more time. Funny enough, I might not be able to get it done before I need to go somewhere today, so I might have to pull most of this tape back off. Seems like uh, the top and this edge over here is really close. And I got like one little pinhole right here I need to probably fix. I need to shape the bottom here a little bit. Right there, there's still some wet putty. Probably just stacked it too thick the first time. The good thing about this is you can come back and add some more later. So this might be a multiple layer job. So far, like I said, this side's looking better. It's coming in, but I might have to pull the tape off and come back later and remask it because I'm going to have to go somewhere in about an hour and a half to two hours. Just sanded that second layer and it's feeling really good and smooth in most places. I got a few pinholes right here and right here I might put the slightest amount on just to fill. I got this one spot right here in the middle where my finger just touched that it needs a little bit extra right there. And then if I could just smooth him over from this side to this side, that would pretty much be done. I might do a little bit of work on the inside here just to make it fill a little bit, but the contour is almost right. Let's put a little bit on that middle spot and then we will let it dry and sit for another 30 minutes and then we'll try to do our final sand. So after that sanding, it looks like the contour is right for the lens. If not, it's really close. So I think I'm gonna stick with that in here. That's good. I got one spot right here and one spot up here. I might just put a little smudge on, let it dry for another 30 minutes and then do my final sanding right there. But it fades into the grill really nice on the bottom the top and the side. So I think I'm gonna stick with that minus those two spots. Like I said, that one and that one. Let's touch them up. Getting you guys up in here for this final sand. We just got this spot, this spot. I did a little bit right here and a hair here. So those four little spots. I know the GoPro probably doesn't have the most detail of this as like in terms of focus and zoom, but just see how those went from the dark shade of it looking wet to turning to the light shade of being sanded. That's what you're looking for. And then you want all those dark spots to basically fade away. Looks like, looks like it's still drying in those holes, but it's level now. You can see a couple small spots right there and a two down here that are drying in it. Let's go ahead and fade right here and right here back out. Just take it easy. Don't get in a rush. I like to blow it as I go and feel it. That's what really tells me right here. I got a little roughness. Let's go ahead and take it out. But let's do it from an angle that we're not hitting the paint as much as possible. I'm just trying to make this thing look mostly factory in term of its profile right here. And right now this is feeling great, like compared to where it was. And visually, when I look down it like this, I really can't tell that it was even hit now, minus the obvious color changes. Let's take out this bottom right here. Almost. really close I 
I think I'm gonna call that right there. Uh, it's got maybe, uh, that's just roughness from past rocks hitting the grill. Let me look down this one last time. I think I can take a little bit off right here. Roll into that curve of that nose right there. I mean, it's not 100% perfect inside here, but I'm honestly, I'm not expecting this curve on the inside to be perfect. But when I put the light bezel on it, it looks really close. So I'm kind of thinking let's not chance it as close as I got it might be where I leave it. And I think that's our final sand right there. So I cleaned it one last time with a, a towel that was wet and then dried it. Let it sit for about five minutes here. Now we're gonna put our first coat on and it's gonna be a gentle one. We're not gonna go too extreme. I'm gonna make sure I get into here. Right there, and that's gonna be our first coat. Just enough to get a sticky surface for us to go from here, adding a little bit more at a time. Time for second coat, five minutes later. Coat number three. Ooh, man, that, that, the dark spots are starting to very get close to fading away. Hmm. So close. It's getting there. I can barely see a little bit of dark right here and right there. But it'll be fading away in probably the next coat if not the next coat number four man that dark the dark part of the bondo is almost gone now i can barely make it out but probably needs one more good coat after this and then i'm gonna say it might be there then it just needs to dry I can see one little spot like right here where it's like slightly low, but man, I was just shooting for getting it 95% there and I think I accomplished it. Okay, I think this might be our last coat and then I'll come and check it in a couple hours and show you guys the finished results. I can barely see that, that dark, maybe. I, I don't even know if I can truly see it or not so let's just let it dry for a couple hours and we'll see how she turns out and the final results are I'd say good kind of hard to tell if anything makes my other corner look not as good you can tell like right in here there's like a little bit of a ramp up especially if you look at it really hard from the side like right here but man like i said i think it's like 95 percent there i think few and far between will notice the difference i'm thinking now i need to take this side clean it down maybe fill a few small little holes with that putty sand them out with that 320 grit and then spray paint this side to kind of match that side and then probably going to redo the the whole grill and light bezels. But for now, I hope that helps you with your repair job. Hopefully you have something just as, as well, hopefully you don't have any damage at all, but hopefully it's just as significant as mine was where you can manipulate the original header and not have to find one and you can just fix what you got. So God bless you all take care. Your friend, St. Chris, Later.